The Jurassic Coast, a mighty tale. 250 million years and 95 miles long. Told in five minutes by this pencil, this brush, and this hand. It's a long, thin, narrow, steep and rocky tale to tell, told from the tops of its cliffs down to the shoreline at low tide. It's the story of the making of rock, from soft beginnings piling up layer upon layer and hardening into stone. Of vast red baking deserts, of oceans rising and falling, of eroding landscapes, of swamps and lakes, and early life cavorting, of forests growing up and dying down, adding yet more layers to the toothsome cake of time. A tale of huge rivers and the beds they left behind, now strewn across the pages of this script. A record of life, evolving, of endless creativity and invention, of ancient plants and primeval trees, of ammonites, ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs, and of the pliosaur mega-predator of the Tethys Sea and, millions of years later, of the creature that evolved to give everything a name. So why a World Heritage Site, I hear you ask? Well, it's the only place on Earth where you can see a near-continuous story of Earth's history across 250 million years laid out before your very eyes. 250 million years, I hear you cry? Yes, but measured in grannies, or two grannies every hundred years, well, that's only about five million grannies, nowhere near even the population of London. About 90 million grannies ago, our sun formed, and then the Earth. And after many changes of clothes, our tale begins when she was wearing the magnificent supercontinent we call Pangaea, which split across the duration of this tale to form the world we know today and bring us to the coast that is our tale. It's like the pages of a 95 mile long book in a crumbling library best viewed from the sea. Some pages stacked in neat piles, others leaning. Whole chapters borrowed and never returned, or slipped into the sea, their letters strewn across the beach. Newer chapters hurled on top of much earlier ones, the missing ones in between called the unconformity. Great chunks of the book crumpled and twisted by some rude and illiterate vandal, honestly. It's a book that's excited huge curiosity across the ages, from the lowly lump sucker to the smarty pants scientist. Stone plants which grew from seeds embedded in the rocks. The bones of mythical dragons or of giant humans. Imprints from Noah's flood. A story of famous fossil hunters and colossal eggheads and of the birthplace of a new science. If we could drop through all the layers of time, such wonders would we see. Such... Oh no, I've run out of time, oh for heaven's sake. So, where will it all be in another 250 million, I mean five million grannies? High up on some new mountain range? Goggled at by a new species? Oh no, that's stupid, that's stupid, honestly. Or in some new ocean, full of new life forms? Or will the fossilized remains of our time here on Earth be revealed on some new coast, embedded in new rocks? Evidence as ever of the unstoppable creativity of evolution, here on the ever-shifting landforms of the great spinning Mother Earth. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. Not bad at all.